Good morning. Welcome to lecture number fifteen of JNR six zero seven Principles of Satellite Image Processing. I am Professor B Krishna Mohan from CSRI IIT Bombay. Let's continue our discussion of neighborhood operations. And in the previous class, we were looking at various image smoothing operations. That is, filters which reduce the difference among pixels within the image and we had uh, seen simple averaging filters we had looked at filters like sigma uh, filter and lee filter which are sensitive to the presence of boundaries or which can control the amount of smoothing based on the noise present in the image right so that's where we stopped yesterday and let's continue the discussion further so another uh, operation that controls the amount of blurring in the image due to averaging without you know sacrificing the ability to uh, smooth inside the objects is the gradient inverse filter so when we say a gradient we are talking of the intensity gradient we are familiar with the physical gradient like uh, in a terrain if two points are separated by certain height there will be a gradient between them okay so from a lower height to a higher uh, location then you have positive gradient and in the other direction you have a negative gradient okay the difference between the two elevations will give you the magnitude and orientation you can find in which direction the gradient is now when it comes to images all we have is suppose this region is dark and this region the other side is white then you have a a boundary of course i am slightly going into the subsequent discussion you have a boundary in this direction separating the white portion from the dark portion and in the opposite direction there is a gradient black to white that is lower intensity to higher intensity right so the gradient inverse filter what it does is it measures the intensity difference between adjacent locations that is pixels at adjacent locations so if this is pixel ij with respect to ij what is the intensity difference with all the neighbors that is measured and those neighbors which have high intensity difference with this they are given lower weightage and those which are closer and whose difference is small they are given higher weightage so if you look at this an intermediate calculation that is some quantity u is computed as the difference between the pixel intensity at location ij and its neighbor and it's inverted so that higher the difference lower the value of u and smaller the difference higher the value of u okay of course to avoid division by zero this calculation is done only if 
a pixel and its neighbor have different intensities. Otherwise, this quantity is arbitrarily defined as say 2.0. Okay. And now, what is done is the value of the pixel after smoothing is computed as a scaled version of the u okay times the pixel intensities okay in the neighborhood so here what is assumed is 50% weightage to the neighbor to the central pixel and 50% combined to all the neighbors okay okay just see this u first this intermediate quantity is computed based on inverse of the pixel differences and then now the weight whatever you are computing one by this quantity which is the unscaled form of the neighbor weight that is normalized okay and you get the smoothed pixel value okay so the size of the wind neighborhood is taken as 2 times w plus 1 so, if w is 1, the window size will be 3 cross 3. If the window size is 2, it becomes 5 cross 5. Okay. So, the window size is often a parameter specified by the user. So, the scaled weight multiplied by the pixel intensity, okay, it is in a sense similar to sigma filter. In sigma filter, what we are doing is we are eliminating some neighbors altogether if their difference from the central pixel exceeds some limit, right. That limit is set according to the local standard deviation. Here, what we are doing, we are not eliminating the neighbor presence altogether, we are lowering the weightage assigned to the neighbors based on how different the neighbor intensity is from the central pixel intensity. Now, this 0.5 is not very rigid. Okay. How much weightage you want to assign to the central pixel, okay, that also can be specified by the user. If it is 0.5, the effect of the neighborhood is considerably less. Okay. So, if you reduce it to say 0 0.2, 0 0.25, etcetera, then the effect of smoothing will be more. Okay. So, this is the gradient inverse filter that essentially assigns weights to the neighboring pixels based on the intensity difference from the intensity of the central pixel in the neighborhood. Okay. These are pretty simple to implement whether it is gradient inverse or Lee or sigma except that in the generalized form of the Lee filter you need to determine the noise variance sigma v square. Okay, I think I did not mention the term I did not explain the terms maybe I will modify this slide and then upload it to Moodle. So, sigma ij square is the image variance within the local window centered at location ij. The mean is the local mean of the window centered at ij. Sigma v square is the noise variance over the entire image because we cannot determine how much noise is present within a window. Right. So, the noise variance is determined looking at a homogeneous area where the image is nearly 
of constant intensity and whatever variance you measure there is attributed to noise. Now, there is another way possible if you are unable to find a homogeneous area. Okay. So, if you look at any practical image between immediate adjacent pixels the intensity difference is pretty small right. If we assume that two adjacent pixels anywhere in the image have very little intensity difference then suppose we generate a, a new image say let us call it d i j is equal to f i j minus f of i plus 1 j plus f i j minus f i j plus 1. Let us take absolute differences. Like this we take all the local intensity differences and take the average. Okay. So, usually we should get a pretty small number. If you take adjacent pixels, immediate adjacent pixels and take the intensity difference and normalize, we are supposed to get very small difference. Now, if we take this whatever differences we have of course, there will be differences at the boundaries, but usually the number of boundary pixels will be much less compared to the pixels which fall inside the objects. So, if we take this as a measure of the contribution of noise to the amount of differences among the neighboring pixels you get. Okay. So, the variance of the D image can be taken as noise variance. This is like one of the approximations people make. That is immediate adjacent pixels are supposed to have very small difference. So, whatever differences are there they are assumed to be contributed by noise and so if we take if we generate a noise image d and then take its variance we can substitute it for sigma v square i mean this is one of the things that people use if they can't find a homogeneous area with a nearly constant image intensity Okay, that is an approximation. Yes. Now, if you average it over the entire image, I mean, if you find the variance over the entire image, the contribution of the boundaries will not be that much. I mean, the number of boundary pixels will be far fewer than the non-boundary pixels. No, no, noise is present throughout the image. Its contribution will be there in each pixel to a smaller or larger extent. The common assumption that we make is that noise has zero mean. It means that some pixels receive a positive contribution, some pixels receive a negative contribution. Overall, the noise contribution has a, an average zero. Okay, we will look at one more. I am giving you a series of methods which are used in uh, image processing for smoothing the image, assuming of course that the noise contribution, as I said, a positive 
to some pixels negative to some pixels so that when you average over them the noise part gets cancelled out. The image also suffers some degree of blurring but if we do the smoothing in a careful way the blurring in the image is not too bad. So another method is k nearest neighbor average this is again pretty similar to sigma filter or in gradient inverse filter with respect to the central pixel we look for the k most similar neighboring pixels and limit the average to only those okay. So instead of computing the local variance and looking for those neighboring pixels whose intensities are within say some c times that standard deviation from the central pixel which requires lot of computation. Here what is done is with respect to the central pixel the most similar neighbors are selected. Okay, as you can see it is pretty similar to gradient inverse except that gradient inverse considers all the neighbors with uh, weightage according to how similar they are here other than the k nearest neighbors the rest are completely excluded from the average. Okay. So suppose I say 4 nearest neighbor average the central pixel plus among the neighbors the four most similar neighbors together are selected and the averaging is done over those five pixels. Remember when I say k nearest neighbor the number of pixels that participate in the averaging will be k plus 1 including the central pixel. Okay, suppose this is k I specified as 4 I am averaging over these pixels. So with respect to 46. 41, 39, 37, 33. Okay. So, these are the more closest in terms of pixel intensity. So, these 4 plus 46 together averaging is done over these 5. Okay. The result is approximated to the nearest integer. So, result is 39. So, with respect corresponding to the position of 46 in the output file we write 39. Okay, I am repeating it most students I mean not most some students make this mistake of overwriting the input file with the average okay, should not do it. The output of any of these filtering operations get stored in an output file the input values are never disturbed. Otherwise, this whole thing becomes order dependent where you start. Okay, any problem with the k nearest neighbor averaging? Pretty simple, is not it? Now, so far what we have looked at is kind of linear filtering whether it is shift invariant or shift variant, but so far what we have looked at is linear filtering that is the linearity is satisfied by the properties of scaling if the input intensities are multiplied by a constant k the all the I mean the output also gets multiplied by the same constant and if you use the superposition principle also it is satisfied by the linear filter. Now, there are situations where the linearity is not applicable. Linearity is applied when we assume that there is no correlation between the signal that is the actual reflected energy from the target and the noise that gets added in the process of recording the image. Okay. So, with we assume that they are not correlated in such cases we can 
try to suppress the noise okay of course the other assumption that is made is that noise is zero mean and additive so for every pixel there is a corresponding noise contribution which is added so it's called additive and zero mean noise in so in such cases the smoothing according to linear filters is applicable now sometimes the noise as a, the nature of noise that gets added cannot be taken as additive now for example when you are generating radar images the uh, coherent imaging system okay the noise gets noise corrupts the image where it is considered to be multiplicative so the noise effect is felt more in the bright parts of the image and less in the dark parts of the image in case of multiplicative noise and also the coherent imaging process as i said when the received signal is collected along with the phase particularly when uh, a signal at a certain frequency and wavelength of the order of uh, centimeters is transmitted we cannot consider it any longer in the as a particle the light cannot be considered in the particle mode it has to be considered as a wave when the wavelength is of the order of centimeters as it happens in case of microwave imaging okay i'm not describing the full uh, mechanism but we have a wave at certain frequency is transmitted from the antenna on board a satellite or aircraft with certain phase and when the back scatter from the target is received again the phase is recorded as well as the amplitude of the return and when you have multiple returns within the same pixel field of view getting added in phase or out of phase you'll get a very strong signal recorded when all the returns get added in phase and they tend to cancel out each other when they get added out of phase when communication engineers are familiar with this principle known as fading sometimes you know if you are listening to uh, radio you get sometimes the volume going up and sometimes it gets diminished considerably okay this is one example of fading so when there is such effect in the image what you see would be some pixels very bright some pixels very dark within the image okay and you get like a salt and pepper effect so it's like sprinkling some pepper and some salt on a picture salt means it's very white very bright so some pixels will appear very bright and the pepper effect is there some pixels will appear very dark okay so we have to deal with such types of noise also so in such cases where the noise effect is not additive okay it's not same kind of effect on all pixels then we have to go for non linear approaches okay some examples are rank order filters or rank filters i'll explain what they are now suppose you have the neighborhood of pixels and you say sort them in some order increasing or decreasing order 
and take the most frequently occurring intensity and replace the central pixel intensity with that okay that is known as mode filtering. So, you count which intensity occurs most often within the pixels in the neighborhood and use it to replace the central pixel or you take the median of all the pixel intensities median means it occurs in the middle. So, if all the neighbors are sorted in some order and then you take the middle element okay so that is median so modal filter if you take this example 15 is occurring 3 times 12 is occurring twice 14 is occurring once 11 is occurring twice so most frequently occurring is 15 so the cent the central element is replaced by 15 I have just expanded the 3 cross 3 into one linear string of 9 elements. Okay. So, you have to take it like 11, 12, 14 first row, 15, 12, 16 second row, 11, 15, 15 third row. Okay. So, the central element is replaced by 15 which is occurring most frequently. This is the mode filter. Okay. So, the median filter again take all the pixels in the neighborhood and find its median here is an example okay this is the salt effect one pixel has very high brightness in the neighborhood okay now if you take the average this effect okay this contributes significantly to the local average whereas look at the median 18 changes to 17 if you apply median, but changes to 32 if you apply median mean. And in the first case, mean I mean it, there is really no change. I mean whether you use mean or median, because the pixel values are all similar, you don't feel the presence. We if I mean you don't feel the difference between the two. But look at this you have a huge difference. Now, what exactly is happening when you use mode filter or median filter? First, we if you assume that the there is only one or the number of odd pixels are much less compared to the normal intensities. they go to the extremes right for example if you take median if you sort all these pixels 157 goes to the right extreme it is the highest brightness so if you sort them it goes to one extreme so the median is not affected whatever this is however bright this odd pixel is in the neighborhood the local median is not affected correct Whereas, the mean if you are taking average of all these, this makes a substantial contribution to the mean. Is it clear why median filter can be an advantage? Okay. So, in the, there are situations when median filter can be a very good substitute for mean filter. So, basically during the sorting process the pixel which is noise gets moved to suppose all these are very bright and this is a very small value like 10 or something then this goes to the left extreme again the median value does not get affected. extreme values are pushed to one end of the sequence after sorting hence ignored when you select the median. Okay. Likewise, you could have chosen the mode filter what do you get 17. Okay. So, instead of 18 you choose, you choose 17 as the output. 
but if there isn't much noise these filters can give you a very blocky appearance in the result you have to have a good reason to use these nonlinear filters the linear filters affect the image in a more gradual manner okay as the neighborhood size changes the amount of change to the image is more gradual but if you use this median or mode filters the appearance the degree of the amount of degradation to the image will be quite substantial okay so you you have to use the median filter with some care so how do you compute the median filter for instance user specifies the size of the neighborhood window so you collect all the pixels sort them in ascending descending order so and then you pick up the middle one for median so this is a 7 cross 7 neighborhood and median filter you can see that the image really gets blurred things got you know the sharpness is really lost the object boundaries are also very diffuse now compared to the original and this whole thing is now looking a lot more homogeneous all the local variations within the water has in the the weeds around the lake even they are now considerably suppressed and all that whatever differences were there in the vegetation inside our campus even those differences are also suppressed because of this heavy filtering just one more example trimmed mean filter so if you take the pixels within the neighborhood the extreme few brightnesses are ignored and the middle ones alone are taken for average this is similar to the k nearest neighbor average okay so for example out of say 9 pixels in a 3 cross 3 neighborhood you may leave out the smallest two and largest two and limit the averaging to the middle five that's one example you can have okay so you have a list of methods which are used for smoothing images smoothing essentially is an operation that reduces the differences among neighboring pixels and if there is a noise contribution to the image that noise also is reduced okay nonlinear filters are more effective in some situations like when there is salt and pepper noise okay whereas linear filters tend to smear the extreme bright and extreme dark pixels over the neighborhood the nonlinear filters simply remove them without disturbing the remaining pixels okay so we use these filters as per need the neighborhood size is also often user specified depending on how much the perceived need is for smoothing okay so the gaussian window based smoothing in case of the shift way invariant filters okay we did not go into the theory of the gaussian filtering but it has several optimal properties because of which it is repeatedly used in several situations and in this case in the case of gaussian smoothing the degree of smoothing can be 
again controlled by user specified parameter sigma. Okay, so, if the sigma is large you tend to get within a given window more or less simple averaging like effect and if sigma is small the central pixel gets higher weightage and the neighboring pixels are assigned lower weightage. Okay, simple averaging does not do well in signal dependent noise. Of course, this comment probably is a little out of place that noise filtering in case of radar images is performed prior to image formation or after image formation. Anyway, how it is done is sort of out of scope for our course, but by I can say in one statement that by sacrificing the spatial resolution in case of radar imaging one can reduce the effect of noise considerably okay. and if there is any residual noise after image formation sigma filter or median filter and some others are applied depending on the perceived need. If the image does appear noisy then one applies any of these filters okay. By itself with uh, the signal processing techniques one can generate for example, a 1 meter resolution radar image, but it will have lot of fading noise. So, what is done is the noise is suppressed by reducing the spatial resolution through a process called incoherent averaging. Okay. So, if you are interested you can read up on that in any remote sensing book, but basically it brings down the spatial resolution from 1 meter say to 5 meters, 6 meters, but in the process the noise also gets considerably reduced. If you find time in this course we will discuss what is called mathematical morphology there also some nonlinear filters are defined for image smoothing. Okay. So, any questions on image smoothing that is we are trying to reduce the difference among neighboring pixels by uh, the neighborhood operations and we can uh, sort of introduce a kind of integration effect on the image. Okay, when you say integration it means that we are bringing things together okay. weighted, weighted summation or simple summation it is what we do in integration right. So, an approximation a qualitative statement for smoothing is like image integration which tends to de-emphasize differences among neighbors. So, any questions? Okay. Now, let us look at the opposite whereby we try to emphasize or magnify the differences among neighbors okay. whereby those pixels which sit on the boundaries between objects become prominent okay, will stand out. So, a quick guess the linear filters had coefficients which are non negative and they are adding up to 1. Okay. Now, we want to determine those pixels which are on the boundary. How should the coefficients be in this case? You speculate. you want to find which pixels are on the boundaries between objects. So, 
if you are looking at the neighborhood what will be what should be contained in the filter with which you process the image and try to identify which are the pixels that are on the boundaries smoothing is we want all the coefficients to be non negative so in case of boundary detection they have to be there have to be some positive and some negative coefficients because when you say there is a boundary it means that there is an intensity difference between edges and pixels so how do you compute difference a minus b means a into plus 1 plus b into minus 1 so one coefficient is positive another coefficient is negative only using them you will find the difference between two elements correct and another requirement what should be the output when there is no boundary in a neighborhood what should be the output of a filter that is looking for boundaries if there is actually no boundary within a neighborhood output should be zero it means that the sum of the coefficients in the filter which we are using for finding boundaries should be equal to 0 because some elements are positive and some elements are negative yes let's take a simple example Okay, this is all negative black. This is all white. Okay, suppose if you take any one particular row of this, you let us say one, 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 and then let's say hundred, 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 hundred. okay now i want to know where the transition is happening you can see and tell but how would a program do it for you yeah so what do you do to identify where the difference is very large all i do for example is find a simple forward difference the difference of these two first two pixels difference of next two pixels difference of these pixels so like this i keep on computing till i come to a point where here there is zero difference zero difference zero difference but here there is a difference of 99 i find difference among neighbors okay consecutively till such time i find the difference between neighbors very high how high is it i have to specify suppose i had 1111123211 these are insignificant differences right so you have to spell out how significant the difference among neighbors should be to say that there is a boundary one side you have a region of one intensity and the other side you have a region of a different intensity okay so edge an edge is essentially like a boundary where brightness values differ significantly among neighbors 
So if you look at this, you have constant intensity, pixels, if adjacent pixels have same intensity and then suddenly there is a big jump, black to white, again white to black. So if you take any one row, this is how it goes. So the location where the difference is maximum that is of interest to us because if you connect all the boundaries you will get the outline of the object from which you can measure its shape, size, orientation. Okay. So, for instance you have a highway you say that it is having it is oriented in this direction okay it has so much width so much length all such properties you can compute when you get its outlines all these pixels pixels which sit on the boundary. So, like if you take IIT campus image, you will get the swimming pool. Okay, It is like a water body inside homogeneous area. So, if you get the pixels on the outline on the boundary of the pool, you will get its area, you can get its length, its width, all these parameters. We uh, depend enormously on uh, the outline of the objects from which we perceive a lot of information about the shape, size, orientation and various other properties. Once we get the extent of the object, then we look at its color, okay, whether it is smooth or whether it is textured okay so various kinds of properties okay we'll start noticing them only after we get the extent spatial extent of the object and in this process we can also get we can sometimes make the image look sharper by highlighting all the boundary pixels this is the input and look at the output the boundary is very crisp now the outlines of all these objects are also very sharp even here you could not see my much difference within the water has in the vegetation inside the lake here all the differences in the state of the vegetation they became a lot more prominent by image sharpening all you have done here is you have made the boundary pixels appear prominent. Okay. So the agent has the process by which we detect edges, we enhance edges, can also make the images appear very sharp, crisp. Okay. So, the edges are essential to mark the boundaries, we can compute various parameters okay. and how sharp is the rise from say low intensity to high or a fall from high intensity to low will give us the magnitude of the intensity change at among neighbors and in which direction is this change happening that will help us determine the orientation of the boundary. So, is that difference between the center pixel and its vertical I mean neighbors above and below or horizontal neighbors left and right or among the diag diagonal neighbors. So, you have to look at the amount of change in the local intensity and the direction in which the change is occurring. Okay. 
in reality we can see these changes as such or the boundaries due to various properties one is color okay and one is brightness sometimes you see difference boundaries due to texture built up areas versus other kinds of areas absolutely plain areas okay you can get different kinds of boundaries based on the texture or even illumination the object as such is same everywhere but the orientation of the light source or the direction of illumination gives us some perceived edges which may not be physical okay i think we'll continue the discussion tomorrow as to how we model the boundaries of objects and uh, how we actually compute the edge magnitude and edge orientation from which we can determine the object boundaries